boy, yesterday was hot. <laughs> now, I know there's probably some people out there going, not in my part of the country, but for me, 92, wow, it about floored me. I mean, it would be nice, of course, if we could right now afford to run our air conditioner or that somehow we could you know, get to the place of having, you know, the budget where we could just have the extra lifestyle choices that maybe would make it easier for us to endure the heat, but because we don't, we don't whine about it. You know, we ask God, okay, Lord, you know, it'd be kind of nice to have some air conditioning. So God brings a window. <laughs> Okay, <laughs> open the windows, <laughs> open the doors, let the wind blow in. But the point of it all being is that God is the one who provides for us. We don't take what God has given us and say, I'm sorry, Lord, that's not good enough. You're going to have to do better. No, in reality, we give thanks and praise for everything that we have. We learn in whatsoever state that we're there in to be content because while it may be a fact that you could get more by doing more, what is it that God wants you to do is the more important part. You may not have the time or even the energy when you get older to go out and do the things that you can do today if you'll just lower your standard of living, so to speak, and not have to have that extra coat, that extra car, that, you know, the washer and dryer instead of going to the laundromat or whatever it may be in your lifestyle choice that you know you you've got a hundred and sixty or you've got three hundred channels on your TV you know maybe you could cut down on half of them that you don't watch or more I know in America our standard of living is you know everybody's got you know a house a car a chicken a pot you know and a home you know and you know, finding the homeless, you know, you find not everyone does, but not everyone's homeless either. A lot of people have more than what they really need. And that's where the body of Christ was supposed to be kind of like that equalizer. We're supposed to be, if we have received abundance, to give abundantly. And if we have received less, to receive gratefully. And that together, the cooperative working thereof would be that those who could would do for and help for those that can't. Because we'll always have the poor with us. Jesus said that, that the poor you shall always have with me, with you. And that gives us the opportunity to be gracious and merciful. It gives us the opportunity to help where we might not have helped. And that I find in America less so as we get into more so the end of the world and the attitudes that are going to happen in these latter days. People are going to be more selfish and self-centered to say, this is mine, you know, you go out and get yours instead of, oh, brother, come and enjoy the goodness of the Lord. Enjoy what God has blessed me with. And that's the attitude we should have about everything. Because a poor man in his poverty can be just as gracious and merciful, sharing what little he has, as a wealthy man in his prosperity. God wants us to have the attitude of thankfulness and gratitude, so that way we would share easily and abundantly with all those that are around us. Taking that perspective, then, we become likened unto our Father, who has everything. But he wants to give all that we would receive from him, his mercy and grace. And so, yes, there are times where I, you know, kind of whine a little bit, you know, like, oh man, it's going to be a hot one, you know. But instead of taking it to an extreme and say, God's forsaken me, or, oh no, what can I do to get him more than what I got? I'd rather think, thank you, Lord, for the heat that causes, you know, the plants to grow faster, more so, and fruit to develop and causes blossoms to spring forth and causes me to slow down, you know, and to maybe take the time to be found in the Word or napping. Sometimes I forget to sleep. And so, in everything, we should give thanks and praise for all or how little that we do have or how much. 
Because God is in control. He can cause, even in the midst of the summer sun, a nice cool breeze to come along. And you'll be sitting there and maybe you'll be a little sweaty. Squirrels in the background. A little sweaty and then suddenly you'll go, oh man, feel that breeze? And because of the sweat that comes out of your body that entangles itself on the surface of your flesh, the wind when it comes along cools down your body and it's just a natural progression of how God's body's air conditioning works. And so we all if we would just turn to our Father and ask, if we would just recognize God in the heavens and look and see that He's also inside us, being with us in the midst of our challenges when it comes to summer heat or winter or fall or spring as the seasons change. Because we'll always have a reason to complain about something. That's just our nature. But in everything, we could give thanks and praise if we would just turn the attitude to one of gratitude. Because everyone can recognize someone that has an attitude. But you know what is a big difference between someone with an attitude and someone who has gratitude? Seek and you shall find. Shall Seek and you shall find. Shall find that inner knowledge that makes the problem of life plain. The difficulties of life are caused by disharmony in the individual. There is no discord in my kingdom, only a something unconquered in my disciples. The rule of my kingdom is perfect order, perfect harmony, perfect supply, perfect love, perfect honesty, perfect obedience, all power, all conquest, all success. But so often my servants lack power, or conquest, or success, or supply, or harmony, and think I fail in my promises because they are not manifested in their lives. These are but the outward manifestations that result from, a, from the obedience, honesty, order, love, and they come not in answer to urgent prayer, but naturally as light resulted from a lighted candle. You know, it is true <coughs> that as you draw near unto the Lord, He will draw near unto you. It's just an automatic thing, of course. You know, I'm getting closer to God. God's closer to me. Makes sense. As you walk in the light, you'll have fellowship one with another because they're in the light too. So as you walk in light, you're in light. Makes perfect sense. But you don't realize that being that way, that means that if you're going to the source of your protection, the source of your supply, the source of your joy, the source of your peace, the source of your sustenance, the closer you get, the more you got. We used to, I used to say it that way. I don't know if everybody used to say it that way, but the closer you are, there you are. You know, and the closer you get, the more you got. Because, quite frankly, God loves to give good gifts to his children. And that he, Jesus said that no man, that when he asked his father, you know, or asked his neighbor of a piece of bread, would give him a stone, or, you know, when a son asked the father, would give him a stone, you know, to eat. But rather, they would give to them that ask. And you only ask when you, you know, you could cry out when you're far away. But when you're close, you just ask. You know, you say, hey, you know, God, you know, I, I need a little extra. You know, you got, a, you, you got another five? You know, God gives you ten. It's like, ah, cool, Lord, thanks. You know, and you go on and you give, you give gratitude because your attitude has changed for the fact that God provides it. And that's one of the things that God delights in. He doesn't withhold any of his blessings from us. Rather, he waits to see the precious fruit of changing our perspective about him when he does bless us. Do we leave him behind because we've gotten what we wanted in the time that we wanted him? Or rather, can we give thanks before we get what God is going to give? Every day, the Lord has given us a reason and a way to be thankful for the day that we live there. And this is the day the Lord has made. We can rejoice and be glad in it if we choose to. And that's where you lose the day or you gain the day. You know, there used to be those old English expressions that said, you know, gain the day. And it meant to win the day over, to be successful, as we say nowadays, or to be, you know, like, I don't know, I can't even think of a motivational speaker term. But I would rather think of it as you gained the perspective of seeing God in action 
in your day. And that's the way to make every day a blessing, a way to see God in the midst of your circumstances, that you could be thankful for whatever those circumstances may be because God is in it. Because God is in you, that means no matter where you go or what you do, there is God. All you need to do is talk, pray, listen, wait, watch, do, and respond as God leads you. And then you'll see that every day has a purpose. Every moment has a plan. Every decision has a design. And every moment that you breathe your breath until your last breath is gone, God is leading you in the way that you should go. So today, maybe it'll get hot. Such as it is, such as it is. Maybe it'll cool down. Maybe not. <laughs> or maybe I'll go in and in the heat of the day, I'll take the coolness of resting in the way that God would have me to do today. Because God has a way of influencing the circumstances of your life to cause you to do what He wants you to do, even if you don't listen directly to what He tells you to do. Me, I think it's a little easier to hear from Him first and know what's going on than to find out by the circumstances of the sun beating down on your neck that, oh, maybe I should have put on some sunblock. I got sunburn. Or maybe I should have come in out of the sun and rest in the shade. Because that's what God is like. He is our strong tower, our shade in time of heat. Enjoy the Lord. Don't just enjoy the day and the circumstances, but enjoy the Lord as you find Him today in your day where you are, in whatever circumstances you find yourself, whether heat, whether cold, whether rain, whether snow, whether hail, whether rain, shine, <clears throat> tornadoes, hurricanes, earthquakes, floods, damage, <laughs> even in those things, hey. David said, even in hell itself, there God is. What more can you say about that? Except, praise the Lord, God, wherever I go, there you are.